Welcome to Public Domain Video Theater from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Today we have something a little bit different. It's an episode of Four Star Playhouse. The early days of television were filled with anthology series such as Climax, Studio One, The General Electric Theater, Your Favorite Story, and so many more. The premise of Four Star Playhouse was that each episode would star one of four stars. David Niven, Charles Boyer, Dick Powell, or Ida Lupino. Which, in theory, meant, if nothing else, you were guaranteed a quality lead actor. Though there were a few episodes where neither of the marquee four appeared, and this is one of them. This is actually a backdoor pilot to a Nightbeat TV series, and this was something that was often attempted during the golden age of television. They would take a potential TV pilot and air it on an anthology series, and if it was successful, a series would follow, at least in theory. Today's episode is the only attempt at a Nightbeat pilot. The original air date on this is November the 5th of 1953. It was Season 2, Episode 7 of the Four Star Playhouse, so let's go ahead and watch. <laughs> That's me, Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for that newspaper you find next to your morning coffee and burnt toast. Yes, the night is filled with its own brand of people. The drifters, the lonely, the lost, each pursuing that ever-loving happiness in his own way. A muffled conversation deciding life or death or tonight's movie. The little Cupid doll proving to the world that she doesn't care. <laughs> Laughing until the tears loosen her artificial eyelashes. An ambulance heading for General Hospital and not a minute to lose. And then around midnight I see the river up ahead, strong with the smell of diesel oil. But well, that's the usual. But when they smear the blackness of the water with floodlights and when they search the river bottom for something, that's unusual. That's a story. Never saw a diver before. What's he diving for? Did you get it? Not yet. But it's down there. I know it is. I'll try the other side of the pier. But I was on this side. I was standing on this side. Lady, this is a river. It's got a current. Well, if it's been swept away, if, it, if it's not down there, I... It isn't on this side, and I can't risk following my lifeline walking through those pilings. Thanks, Sam. Pardon me, my name is Stone. So? Going down again? Any objections? <laughs> no. Well, then, if you don't mind, I'll slip into that unknown and mysterious watery world that belongs to no man. You 
mind telling me what you're diving for? Pocketbook. Pocketbook? You mean just an ordinary purse? Obviously not. My time's worth 50 bucks a dive, which isn't enough. And I... Well, who worries about a diver's economic status? Are you ready, Sam? Yeah. Why is she so anxious to get the purse back? Now, that I didn't ask her. You think the jobs come so thick and fast in the Chicago River that I can afford to be choosy what I get down for? <laughs> a lot of ransom for a purse unless it's made out of gold. Maybe it's what's in it that makes it valuable, hmm? Strange place to lose a purse way out here at the end of the pier. When'd you lose it? Why is it your business? I'm a newspaper man. A new... Can he stay down? He'll let us know. What's his name? Why don't you ask him? At the well. How deep is it down there? I wouldn't know. I haven't been down. Just full of information, aren't you? Oh, no. Just to make sure there'll be no beeps later. No, no, please. Well, I see you retrieved the purse. An astute observation. You got a cigarette? Yeah, yeah. How do you fellas work, anyway? You mean why, don't you? No, no, I mean, uh, you get paid in advance or, or what? This bothers you? No, I was wondering about the girl. She went off without even thanking you. <laughs> That's life, I guess. Before you get down, the diver is the most important thing in the world to them. Real heroes, real lovers. And after you recover what they've lost, why, the honeymoon's over. But she paid me. When did she lose the person? Tonight, three or four hours ago. That's what she told me, anyway. Three or four hours? She's lucky the current didn't carry it away. Didn't carry it far, not weighted down like that. Weighted down? Pretty heavy gun. Gun? Looks like a 32 automatic. 32 automatic? I wonder if she wanted that purse back. I don't think so. I think she was more interested in the money. The money? A wad big enough to choke a porpoise. A wad? Yeah. Look, chum, do you have to keep repeating everything I say? I'm sorry. You're sorry. I'm sorry. The whole world's sorry. Imagine how he feels. Pardon me, uh... How who feels? He don't anymore. You've lost me. What are we talking about? The guy. The guy downstairs, under the pier. Under the pier? Now, there you go again. 
You mean to tell me there's a dead man under this pier? Well, if he's not dead, he's sure been holding his breath a long time. Why didn't you bring him up? I was hired to bring up a pocketbook. That's all I was paid for. Nobody said anything to me about a stiff. Is that true, Billings? Is your body down there? Yeah. But between a couple of pilots. Well, why didn't you bring him up with you? I wasn't paid to. Go get down and get him. Wait a minute, not so fast. Who's going to pay for the dive? The police department. That's who. Now get moving. Oh, all right, all right. Just wanted to make sure I was going to get paid, that's all. Sam, my hat. We're going down again. Identification, no name, nothing. A floater. Medium height, medium weight. Undistinguished, except for being dead. Sideshow's over. The curtain's down. You know, when he was born, it was important to somebody. Man dies without a name. Doesn't seem right. Who was it? What was he doing in the Chicago River? A guy like that lost his identification long ago. It's a funny thing. The story of an unidentified drowned man, what's it worth? Maybe two lines of newsprint. But a pretty woman hiring a deep-sea diver to recover a purse out of the Chicago River. That's new. So they finally pulled him out, huh? Yeah. Dead? Mm hmm. Who was he? I haven't the slightest idea. Why didn't they look in his coat? What coat? Over there by the oil drum. Charm. You'll find it fit. Man could get killed. Wouldn't you like to fill it with champagne? Never work, it leaks. Wouldn't take long to change it. Some other time. Some other shoes. Where do you think you're going? I want to see him. What about? I want to ask him some questions. I got all the answers you need. You weren't very communicative earlier tonight. Ask me. All right. What was the name of the woman who hired him to retrieve the purse? Try another one. You're not much help. I do okay. 
Any man that tends a lifeline pumps the air down there. He's got a place in this world. I'm not questioning that. You're not going to disturb George. Let the press in, Sam. Oh, George, you want to be left alone, and I ain't going to let anybody bother you. Good old Sam. My faithful lifeline. Go on back and have your beer. I'm all right. I just want to ask some questions. Yeah. Well, let's see. You want to know, A, what made me decide to become a diver? B, what's it like down there? And C, does my wife worry about me? I'll answer that in reverse. I don't have a wife. It's muddy down there, and I must have been out of my mind to become a diver in the first place. Does that answer your questions? Not quite. What was the name of the woman who asked you to dive for the purse? Why, is that important to you? No, not to me. But it is to Mike Savano. Who's Mike Savano? The floater you fished out of the water. Mike Savano. You know him? I've met him. In rivers, in ocean, in floods. But he always looked the same. Dead. Why don't you just leave him alone? Putting a name to him. What good's that gonna do? What's her name? Why? It was in his wallet. Oh? She might want to know what happened. Her name's Walker. I've got her address on the check that she gave me. Janet Walker. I'd ask you to have a drink with me, but I don't believe in it. You get to drinking with people, and it becomes a habit. You get to liking it. You drink alone, it gets over with quicker. That standard procedure after every dive? Believe it or not, it's the first drink I've had in a year. Yeah, a whole year. That time, it was the body of a kid. Just a little kid. like a word with you. About what? About this. She must be Janet. Like it says on this picture, to Mike with love. Janet. Where did you get that picture? Recognize it? Well? No. I'll take another look. You won't bite. Feel it, it's dry. Savannah wasn't wearing it when they fished him out of the river. Mike's dead? Surprised. Tell me. Cold as the stars, breathless as the dust, deceased, the mortis ended. Ended. Dead. What's the story, lady? There's no story. Take it from me, when they push a guy into the river, that's a story even for the Chinchilla Breeders' Gazette. Pushed. Pushed. You don't think that I... But I didn't. I met Mike on the pier to give him the money. He told me he'd leave us alone if I gave him $5,000. He promised me. I opened my purse to give him the money. He saw the gun. Maybe he thought I meant to kill him. Maybe he thought that. I don't know. I don't know why I took the gun. I was always afraid. Anyhow, he tried to grab the purse from me. It fell into the water. He was crazy mad. I've seen him mad before lots of times, but never like that. I thought he was... When did you get back? This man came to tell us Mike's dead. Dead? He can't ever hurt us again. I didn't realize I was bringing such a jolly piece of news. Who are you? Randy Stone. He's a newspaper man. Got a dirty word around here? 
Look, my wife and I are pretty tired. But not unhappy, huh? That's right. You hit the nail right on the head. This is the happiest moment of our lives. Champagne on the house. What else you want to know? Which one pushed Savannah into the water? Wait. No, John. Honey, if he prints that story... We can't stop him. We've got to try. Listen. Until tonight, Mike Savannah was my husband. I thought that... That's one too many, isn't it? Don't you talk to her like that. Look, mister. If you want a story, okay. I'll give it to you. Savannah was her husband. This is the second time Janet heard he was dead. The first time was six years ago. A telegram from the Merchant Marine. Janet and I were married a year when Mike showed up too healthy for words. He found Janet happy, not getting punched around every couple of days. Most annoying to Mike. The last four years, he's been squeezing the poor kid's blood out drop by drop. I found out about this last 5,000 tonight. All right. So now he's dead. He won't bother her anymore. Janet and I can live happily ever after. At least until the next edition of your newspaper. That's your story. Maybe it's corny. But it's the best we can do on such short notice. I gave you a name. Do I have to give you honor? about that silly law about pushing people into the Chicago River? Hey! Oh, so you found the code, huh? How about this guy? What guy? It's Mike Savano. He used to own this coat. Huh. Little worse. What? I got a wife. She thinks liverwurst the final word in groceries. About this Mike Savano. Your Mike Savano's a real nut. You knew it? No. Well, how come you knew his name? Well, you said his name. I didn't. I said he was a nut. There's one thing about liverwurst. No, always tastes the same. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. Uh, can we talk about Savano? Why not? When did you first see him? Early tonight, out on the pier. Was he alone? No salt. I got a wife, she gives me a break. Puts in a hard-boiled egg and then forgets the salt. Was Savano alone? No. Well, who was with him? You ever try eating a hard-boiled egg without salt? Who was with Savano? That girl who came later with the diver and the floodlights. Or was it she who, uh... Mm -hmm. Somebody pushed him into that river... You know what I ought to do? I want to know how he got into the river. Is that what you want to know? Yeah. Then ask me nice. Mr. Stark. Mr. Stark. I can't let you print that story. Well, before I become intimidated, is that the same gun you fished out of the river tonight? I mean it. Ed and I, we've suffered enough. We can't take any more. Did you dry the barrel and all the bullets, everything in tip-top shape? I mean it, Mr. Stone. Well, before you pull that trigger, maybe you better listen to the story I've written. Night Beat by Randy Stone. It's more than possible that you've never heard of Dave Billings, a deep-sea diver, playing hopscotch on the bottom of the Chicago River. This is a saga of Dave's dreams and sorrows. Mike Savano drowned accidentally. Accidentally? You know how your late husband died? Diving for the $5,000 in your purse. If he'd have lived, he'd have been back tomorrow for more. A real nice guy right up to the end. How do you know? There was a witness to the fact that he was alone on the end of the pier. A watchman saw the whole thing. As he said, if a nut wants to go swimming in the Chicago River, that's his business. 
Mike got caught in the pilot. <laughs> Not much of a story in that. That kind of thing happens all the time. Now, will you go home to your husband and let me earn my few bucks? Guaranteed to improve the species. You know, you'd think after three or four thousand years, we get wise to the fact that... After all, what have any of us really got in this great big cockeyed world except each other? Thank you. Type of three fingers are like a fortune. Copy, boy. Welcome back. Some mixed feelings on this pilot. On one hand, it's nice to actually see Randy Stone out covering a case, asking the questions, and doing all those things we get to hear him doing on Nightbeat. And I think this is a perfectly okay episode, but is it a very good representation of for the series, and for a potential television series, not really. Not be always centered on strong guest characters who played off of Randy. At first, it kind of seemed like the diver was going to fill that role, but he ends up having no real connection to the mystery that's the heart of the story. And because of that, I think the pacing was a little off too, because we spent so much time at the dive site that the whole thing with the Laura character really does feel like it's a bit rushed. Still, it's not a bad episode, and and it's a special TV treat for Nightbeat fans. Frank Lovejoy would return in Four Star Playhouse in yet another pilot, and that would be made as a private detective series. The Adventures of McGraw. And maybe we'll get around to the pilot episode uh, one of these days. But it's too bad that Nightbeat couldn't have been picked up and turned into a TV series because it definitely would have been worth watching. All right, well, that will do it for now. Join us back here next time for another episode of Public Domain Video Theater. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. And if you like these videos, you can become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.